What up, what up, world? Now, we're used to calling this a pop dust exclusive, but we're big on change around here. So welcome to the first installment of Hosted by Decent with me, your host, Decent. Bam. Bam! What better way to start off the first edition than with probably the biggest guest we've had at pop dust this year? Now, Man, that's as, big. That's big. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> they have came back together and blessed us with a new album called Made a Lord Watch. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Fonte, rapper Big Pooh, little brother, y'all. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. Appreciate it, brother. What thank an you. intro. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. So, let's get into it. The let's album, go. Made a Lord Watch. In regards to this album, you know, it stemmed from the reunion that you guys had last year. And yeah. you guys mentioned how barbecue took place and you know, came over prior to everybody showing up and you discussed what transpired and then the idea of the project got kicked around. Now, were there other things I would discuss that led up to the project or was it just show did y'all feel that? You know, let's get on to it. Man, we dive right in, man. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, prior, prior even to the, the, the reunion, the, the, the show itself, like Fonte and I had at various points of us reconnected, just brought up the idea of it. And it always just turned to, ah, nah, nah, we, we good, we good. Mm -hmm. And it just, everything just felt right. You know, it, right. Was, it, was in, it was in God's time that that the reunion happened. And then when we spoke, like, it just felt like it was the right time. And so once we made that decision at the barbecue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Straight up. Like, we literally just dive at the barbecue for real. <laughs> <laughs> Head first. We didn't think about it. We didn't try to plot it out before we just started Instantaneous. Instantaneous. Yeah. From October, yeah, October 2018 yeah. up until like August, weeks ago. August 10th. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was when we actually finished it. So we were working on it, fine tuning everything up until like the very last minute when the record was released on the 20th. Oftentimes when you talk about reconnecting with somebody that you work with a long time, people often question is the chemistry going to be there? Did you guys ever have that question or? Did you guys just feel like, you know, we've been rapping together so long that once you get us in the room and get us on a beat, it's gonna happen regardless of how long we've been separated? You know, we started off, you know, together and we just worked together so much and just learned each other in terms of just MCs, you know, right. learn each other. But in the time we spent apart, we each went off and got better in our individual crafts. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so when we came back together, it was really important for me to honor who Pooh became in my absence and, mm -hmm. and likewise for him, you know what I mean? So it wasn't just, you know, when I'm spitting a rhyme, normally in the past, it would just be, I do my verse, ha, I'm the God, it's over, you know what I mean, yeah. whatever. And likewise with him, but this time it was every rhyme we did, we wrote all the songs together and every record, it was, yo, at the end of the verse, I was like, yo, what you think of that? How does that work? You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I value how he's grown since we've been apart and likewise. So like some peer review shit. You yeah, know just, what I'm and just even each other's processes were different. Mm -hmm. You know, how like how we get to that verse and how we get to the the song finishing. Like all that was different than the last time we worked together. So it was you were just relearning those things. And and even as you relearn those things, well for us, we knew each other's artists. Mm -hmm. Now we got the really learn who each other were as people. Yeah. When we did the last Little Brother project, it was almost 10 years ago. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we, And even that was just, you know. Yeah, that was just, we that was just put together. Right? <laughs> yeah, so it was like, like, it was a contract to film. Yeah, it, it was, was. no love in it. it was, no love in it. Had some songs on it. It was cool moments, but. That was us showing, even if we're not talking to each other, we could still put something together that was decent. That was kind of like y'all the love movement, you know. And Absolutely. Like, and Absolutely. and I like the love movement. Don't get me wrong. It was moments on the love movement that I absolutely enjoyed. But you know, you could hear that the love and the chemistry was, yeah, was lost. Was, you know it, what I'm saying? It was you know, it was artists making you know a project as opposed to family creating something exactly, that, exactly. that you know they could be proud of. And you guys talked about how much you've grown as you know artists and as men. You know. When it comes to this project, it still harkens back to a lot of the things that people recognize from Little Brother Projects, you know, the UBN networks, the inclusion mm -hmm. of Peter Rosenberg on the skits and things like that. Was that a conscious effort to kind of like reboot? For me, and just kind of conceptualizing the record early on, I, I knew it was important to 
conclude that storyline. Right. You know, and, I, and I thought it was important to, in a lot of ways, you know, you have to give fan service. You know, you want to give something for the day ones that's been with you, you know, from the beginning. Absolutely. But at the same time, you have to create something that is not so deep in the weeds that people who may just be hearing you for the first time are like, well, what the fuck is this? this you want to make it really accessible. accessible. Yeah, it has to be accessible on that level. But so, you know, you have to kind of write. It's kind of the same way I approach, you know, just my rhymes as an MC. It's like, if you get all the references and you get all the nerd kind of shit I'm saying, then it's amazing. But even if you don't get all the references, just the sound of it and the way the syllables connect, it can connect on just a surface of like, wow, this really sounds good. And that was kind of the approach with the record. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, we've been adamant and just let me know. It's like, not a part two. It's, it's not a part two. It's not a nostalgia play. No. We're not saying, oh, we're going to take you back to when you were, fuck, taking it back. We ain't trying to go back. And it doesn't feel like <laughs> that at all. It feels very, very organic, even though it's targeted back to what we all got introduced to you guys as. And yeah. Kind of going back to what you said as far as like the nerd shit and like, you know, <laughs> embedded syllables on Black Magic, the Ola Ray. Like, yeah, that's, I, that I was, was like, deep pool, right? <laughs> Thank you for being one of like the five. I was like, <laughs> what? Wait, no, 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 no. Let's go back. Like, but it's, it's moments like that as a fan that I enjoy like listening to you guys Thank because you, that's what, you know, really, really tapered my ear to hip hop and in regards to the sound that you guys, I don't want to say necessarily created, but refined. Because Absolutely. you guys were bucking the system against what traditional Southern hip hop was. Yeah, know? and old five us making that record was yeah, yeah that it was shit. Was that was three us yeah. making that record. <laughs> <laughs> like, what like, samples? It, yeah, <laughs> that's why nobody thought y'all not from North Carolina, Philly, uh, New York, yeah, uh, Brooklyn, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. like not not North Carolina. But you guys really, you know, in a sense, define yourselves with that sound so now you get included amongst like the Talib qualities and like the most deaths and Absolutely. you know the black thoughts and you guys are like in that pantheon of people who I don't want to say I don't want to call it backpack because I feel like it's super super insulting you know I just want to call it I want to call it classic hip hop but not in a very very ironic no sense. I know what you mean I it's just I mean, like yeah. you can hear like you can play the minstrel show today and it's still feels and sounds the same way as, as it did this back. album. Yeah, right? I mean, I think there's a, I think there's a, when people say classic, you know what I mean? I think it really, what they're, a, a more apt way to describe would just be timeless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I remember it's like listening to Tribe's first album or listening to Tribe's, you know, the first three Tribe's, any Tribe, you know, or like recently, you know, Pete Rock, he just put out a record, yeah. him and Sky Zoo did a record together. And it's a song that Sky Zoo was rhyming over a beat that Pete did for Illmatic. For Illmatic, yeah. It was a Pete he it was a beat he did for Illmatic that Nas didn't use. But if you wouldn't have told me you that's what he did the beat for, I would have never known. So now even when I hear it, I was like, Wow. Yeah. It's that just timeless. Yeah, it's a mainstay, yeah. It's a it's a timeless thing. And like in, in, in art, I mean I think you have those moments where there's some things that are I think you have to decide: Are you an act or are you an artist? Mm. And and there's and there's nothing wrong with being either one. I think you just have to be very clear about where you want to stand. Yeah. I mean, if you're in, if you're if you're an act, you can make a lot of money in a short period of time being an act. But once you're once that clock hit fourteen fifty nine, nigga, it's over. <laughs> it's over. But as an artist, I mean, if you're making something that is is truly good and you're making something that is coming from a real place and it's not defined by any particular trend of what's happening right now, mm -hmm. I think, you know, you can really have a long life in the game. What are some of you guys' favorite records, like individually and collective on this project? I love all the songs. Right. Um, this is a record where you listen, like even I tell him, like, I did something for this record that I hardly ever do. And that's, as we were completing songs, I didn't take them with me. Yeah, he didn't take any work. To I, 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 yeah. I didn't work until we were almost finished, like trying to make sure the sequence was right. Mm -hmm. I didn't take songs home, so every time I heard it again, it felt fresh to me. Mm -hmm. So now, even when I hear it, like I can play the record, like I didn't create it, even though I created. It, right? mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's had distance from it. Yeah, and so you, you know, know, as an artist, you know, once you leave, you know, you email it to me. You just yeah, play you just play it, play it, play it, play it. And, and by the time it's out, you're done with you, it. You're done with <laughs> it. Right, right. Yeah. You know, before then, before it goes to match, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, get it away from I hate this shit. <laughs> um, but, I mean, as far as personal moment, like for records, um, The Feel, that was the second song we recorded. 
Um, so that was definitely special. Just the, the yeah. feel. Of, everything was like the first very yeah, first. Yeah, ev- everything was the first. Um, worked through me. Um, we actually recorded. We were recording that song the night, the day we found out Nipsey Hussle died. Wow. That's the song we were working on. We were literally in the studio and Tay found, I found out he does like I do. As I'm writing, I'm all on social media. I'm just all over the place. And we saw it at the same time. Like, yo, this is, you know, it's crazy. Um, so that was, that was a, you know, I always remember that. One of my favorite moments was, um, I think was recording Picture This uh, from Black Milk. Um, we had been, we were in LA um, just doing some work on a record, hit meeting with different producers, like going through tracks and, and whatever. And uh, I had a meeting with Black Milk that day. And I think we were supposed to meet at like 4.30 and LA traffic and some other shit, and whatever. I don't think I ended up getting to Black Milk until like 4.15, <laughs> like straight up and down. You know what I'm saying? So I run in and he's like, man, I only got room for like another 15 minutes. I just want to play you some joints. Like, all right, cool. So he sit down, me and him get to talking because we ain't seen each other in a while. Right. It's damn 445, the shit. So the studio owner comes in and he's like, wasn't tripping, but he was like, oh no, dude, it's fine. Stay if you need to stay long or whatever. So Milk started playing tracks and it's just me by myself. Who was, uh, he was going to meet with some other producers. And so uh, him and Black Soul were together. So I'm sitting down with Milk. Milk plays, like he goes through a couple tracks. Uh, he might've played like four beats. He got the picture of this, and I was like, "Dude, that's it." And he was like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's it, dude. That's that's. I'm telling you, that's the one." He was like, "Oh man, that's the easiest beat session I've ever been in my life." <laughs> so I took that joint. Black Soul was with us that day, and we ended up cutting later that night. We ended up cutting the vocals for it in the hotel room. Wow. I had my I had my setup with me, my mobile setup, and Soul cut his hook vocals right there, and. Um, just the way it came together, you know, we were really, oh man. And like, and those are things that again, like you can't fake and those are things that we ended up keeping. Like we were, we were, there was talk, you know, we were thinking, okay, we could get someone else to sing this hook if we want to get a bigger name or whatever. But I was just like, man, I can't recapture this moment again. It's here right now. This is it, Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I can't, it could be bigger, it could be better, it could be bright, whatever the hell. But we're not gonna get any more honest. So some of the right spirit here. of that feels, song, like it feels good right now. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So yeah, that was that was one of my favorite memories. Just watching that record come together and us all working together in the room. That was really special. Got to talk about how you know the reunion happened, how this body of work kind of came into play. So now we're gonna play a game. Now <laughs> the name of this game is called Sibling Rivalry. Ah oh, shit. Okay. So okay. I'm gonna give you mm-hmm. brothers. Because, little brother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to give you sets of brothers who have different mediums of sports and entertainment. Okay. And you guys are going to tell me which one is your favorite out of the oh, two. two brothers. Okay, cool, cool. Sibling rivalry between Eddie and Charlie Murphy. Mm-hmm. I think Eddie, Eddie. That's almost unfair because Eddie is just. Yeah, I mean, he's insane. a megastar. I, I, I definitely, I would, I like Eddie more as the actor. You know, stand-up comedian, but I think Charlie, it just didn't translate. I think when he did his own stand-up, his comedy, yeah. Charlie was a great storyteller. Yeah, like definitely. Cherry was like, I mean, Eddie is like a funny guy. I mean, come on, he's fucking Eddie Murphy. Murphy he's yeah. a god. But Charlie was just that dude that you know, if we were all at a cookout or some shit, Kill it. yeah, Charlie, I would just want to listen to Charlie tell all stories. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he was, uh, it was amazing, man. True legend and definitely is missed to this day. Yeah. Okay, so from one famous funny family to another. I think I know where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> Sibling rivalry, Sean or Marlon? Marlon. Marlon. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, Marlon. We have a show we do um, called Sherman Showcase on IFC. It's a sketch comedy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I do a lot of music for that. Me and my man Zoe, we do a lot of the musical sketches for that. And uh, Marlon was a big champion of that show, and he was on it. And so we had this bit that we did. Um, it never aired. It was they shot it, but they did. It was just kind of like for the pilot we shot. And there was a bit where I had to produce. Me and Zoe had to produce. A Mr. Dalvin solo track, Nigga. and Marlon was Mr. Dalvin, <laughs> but it was just talking. Like so, he didn't sing; it was just him talking. And like, there's this bit that Marlon did. He's like, "Excuse me, lady, you have somewhere I can sleep." 
no, no, really, I need to sleep at your house. <laughs> I didn't know that ASCAP didn't pay royalties. <laughs> like, like, he played it so straight. All right, sibling rivalry. Mark or Pau Gasol? Shit. Um, a sports question that stumped him. No, nah, it doesn't stump I'm me. I'm, I'm, try, I'm <laughs> trying to think of which, I'm trying to which brother I will, I will prefer. I would probably prefer uh, Mark because Mark He's was the better defender. Yeah. He's grizzled, but he has all of the offensive capability as Powell. He just wasn't as smooth as Powell. He's but more gritty and rigid. Way more. Hey, he was for the Memphis Grizzlies. Exactly. He, was, he was the grindhouse. Yeah, he, yeah. Memphis barbecue, you know, put some toughness to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was a stockier brother, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would I would take Mark. I would go Mark. Cool, cool. Sibling rivalry. Peyton or Eli Manning? Peyton. That's, that's no contest. No contest. I'm not even going to lie. Listen. <laughs> I'm sorry, New York Giants fans. <laughs> the real is the real. <laughs> Eli, if you go look at the New York Giants seasons under Eli, they aren't very good. He just went on a run for them two Super Bowls, and he happened to be Tom Brady both times. That was like two magical runs. I'm going to put my New York Giants bias aside. Those two Super Bowls, had it not been for David Tyree with that catch. With the helmet catch. And Mario Manningham with that other catch. Yo, like, it's, it's like they went on two magical runs. I still hate that you prevented Randy Moss from getting the damn ring. But they went on two magical runs. And nigga, that's, that's Eli. <laughs> that's Eli. Civil rivalry. Malice or Pusha T? For me, it was always Malice. You know, I mean, and, and Push is amazing. You know what I'm saying? The thing I liked about Malice was that always, Pusher was just the unrepentant drug dealer. Like he was just always, <laughs> no, I don't give a fuck, nigga. I'm moving these bricks. I don't want fuck to you. forgive me. I don't want it. With Malice, even before he became, you know, no Malice and he, you know, kind of left it alone. In Malice, there was always a sense of regret right. and longing of just like, there was always conflict there. And that just always, for me, made him a more compelling MC in that way. I'm gonna say push it because I'm a I'm a you know I'm a yeah. sledgehammer uh rapper myself. So <laughs> and you got that Virginia body. And it, uh, <laughs> Virginia body. But the thing about I do want to say the thing about Malice is no Malice now, but the thing I want to say about him is I think people were because of the flow, like his flow mm -hmm. was more conversational than yeah. it was like rap. Yeah that people didn't give him the proper due, but when you break down his bars, yeah. like he was me. Malice made a lot of things, he made them sound easy. Yeah. Like, it, you know, that to me that's, you know, the work of a, of a master when they can pull off these high, really high conceits and these things that technically are really hard to do, but they sound so easy. And the so average listener may just be like, oh, he just talking, but niggas who do this is like, nah, yeah. bro. Nigga, it's, it's something. It's, it's, some, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot in them, them boy. Yeah. Sibling rivalry. Russell Simmons. <laughs> or his brother Joseph, aka Red DJ Run. Run. I think. I, I think. For obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, we gotta get that to run, man. I think we gotta give it to run. I mean, you know, listen, I mean, all love for what Russell has done and you know, everything, but yeah, I, we gotta give it to run for, for me, man. Run is, uh, run was one of the first guys I saw in hip hop that made having a family cool. Right. He was, you know, I mean, he was yeah. the first dude that was just like, you know, this is my wife and, you know, my these are my kids and, you know, it ain't, I ain't faking or whatever, like this is what it is. And um, he was never afraid, you know, I'm just, I'm the old nigga. He, he, showed, he showed my life has changed. Yeah, yeah. My whole life has changed. He, 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 he was originally genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta, I gotta give it to DJ Run. Man. Nah, I, I, go, I go with Run, I go with Run, man. And but just seeing Run DMC and the barriers that they were able to break, like that always meant something. Uh, something to me before I started learning about what happens behind the scenes. You just saw what you saw and, and run was it. Civil rivalry. Tito or Jermaine? I think I'm gonna have to give it to Tito. I'm gonna give it to Tito because Jermaine married Tito's ex-wife. Jesus. Like, and that's just some savage gutter nigga shit to do. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Tito because I don't like Jermaine's hairdo. Yeah, Jermaine, yeah, Jermaine got like armor. I don't know what which game gets like what the fuck that is. I it's saw Jermaine in person a few years ago and I was like, oh, that's actually there. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like it's it's just weird. It's like it's, it goes beyond the Beijing. Yeah, it's, it's like, like Beijing. Whatever Beijing gonna with say turtle right? wax on it. Like, so I don't know what the fuck is this. I'm shit. like, dog, nah, just. Stop. But listen, <laughs> listen, brother. <laughs> I think we should start as that. Get Jermaine a Caesar. Can we just I, get Jermaine? And I don't, a even, I don't even think Jermaine wears a do rag. I think he takes the hey, like Tupac. Man. Yeah, yeah. He, the, <laughs> he just protects the back <laughs> and pulls it in the front, and nothing touches it. Nothing touches the top. <laughs> nothing at all. I gotta get a Tito. Jermaine is, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have to. That nigga Jermaine is special. Yeah. All right. Period. Now that. His body of work is out there in the universe. Where do we go? I know we going up. You know, I know you guys have mended yeah. your relationship. I know that you guys as men have grown so much. So what is your outlook on the future of Little Brother? You know, I, I think it was just important for me and Pooh just to reestablish the brand again and let people know that the brand is active. And so now that people see us active again, uh, there's not as much pressure and there's not as much of a thing anymore. Like, right. you know, that was, again, there was times you know, when we first started working in 2016, we first started just being and talking to each other in 2016, you know, he was working on stuff, I was working on stuff, and we had moments where it's like, yo man, you wanna jump on this, do a verse? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, shit. I can't even do a record with my homeboy. Without people going, little without, brother. <laughs> right, without people being like, oh shit, does this mean we're gonna, it's like, no, this just means we did a fucking song. Fonte right? featuring Pooh. Pooh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. That's not little or brother. rapper Pooh featuring, like, that's it, you know what I mean? And so now, I think in terms of just where we go from here, you know, I really think the record is, it's the start of a new chapter. And for the first time, I feel like, you know, in our careers, we get to be in control of that chapter and we get to write it the way we want to write it. And, you know, most importantly, we get to write it together. Same, man. I, same. Yeah, same. Nah, you, you put it perfect. Hit it right on the head. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, fellas, thank you so much for stopping by. Man, thank you, man. Hosted by Decent. <laughs> Made a low watch. Hosted by Decent. Can we get hashtag get Jermaine a season up from here? Can we get that? Lord Watch <laughs> is out now, ladies and gentlemen. Right now. This has been hosted by DC. Give it up for our guest, Lil Brother, y'all. Yes, indeed. We will see you soon. Yo, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like it, subscribe to our channel and click the little bell to be notified of brand new content. And also, make sure you visit our website, popthis.com, and follow us on all social media at popthis.com.